My name is David Rodwin, and this is The Life. So the most unexpected film I saw in Park City this year was a slam dance film called Ghost Team One. The reason why it was the most surprising was because when I heard the description, I didn't want to go see it. But I happened to know one of the producers, and I felt like I should go and I should support, even though he described the film to me as paranormal activity meets Harold and Kumar. Now, the first Harold and Kumar was a lot of fun, but honestly, I don't seek out films that are like that generally. And paranormal activity, not only have I never seen that, but I generally avoid horror movies always. So it is with shock and delight that I can actually report that Ghost Team 1 is hysterically funny. It is the Shaun of the Dead of paranormal horror films. And here's what makes the film work. It's not only that the writing of the film is decent, the structure is sound, but most importantly, the actors are so committed to all the insane things that they do, they take it so seriously that it becomes hysterically funny. The strange buddy relationship of the two lead characters is completely believable as well as tortured. The hot girl who goes looking for ghosts with them is fantastic as well as the Daphne type character that makes up this quartet of a Scooby-Doo kind of scenario. But the actor who steals the movie is this racist son of a bitch who you kind of hate from the very beginning and at first you think he's just a pesky sort of throwaway comic character but in the end he turns out to be the focal point and he turns things up to 11 on the comedy scale in a way that just sent me reeling. 90% of it was shot at like 4 a.m., you, know, you know, in the middle of the ghetto, so we had no choice but to find. So kudos to him, congratulations to the entire cast, and Mark One for Todd Schatz, producer of Ghost Team One. My name's David Rodwin, and this is The Life. And while Kirsten Dunst and Tay Diggs turned in good performances, and while the direction is not bad, honestly the script itself was the thing that felt most lacking. And like Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf, it was a continual...